Nice, nice. Mm. All right, good morning. All right, so here it is. Muldoon lived all alone in the Irish countryside with his only pet dog for company. And one day the dog died and Muldoon went to the parish priest and said, Father, me dog is dead. <laughs> Could you be saying a mass for the poor creature? Father Patrick replied, he said, oh, I'm afraid not. Uh, we cannot have services for an animal in the church. Um, but, th but there are some Baptists you know, down the lane, and they might you know, be willing, no telling what they believe. Maybe they'll do something for the creature. And Muldoon said, oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Father. Um, I'll be going down there right away. But Father, do you think that $5,000 is enough to donate to them for the service. And Father Patrick explains, well, <laughs> sweet Mary, mother of Jesus, why didn't you tell me the dog was Catholic? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's cute, come on. All right, so uh, in the science of mind, we teach that what you focus on increases. So like right now, all I can focus on is that the back door is open out there, and we need to close that. Thank you, Dan Rose, beautiful, see? You think I'm not paying attention, but I am. I am paying attention. What you focus on increases. Another way to say this is that energy goes where energy flows. So the way I look at this is like uh, a high-powered laser and a light bulb actually have the same kind of potential energy, right? The laser manages its energy in a more efficient way, though because it produces a more impressive and a more powerful result. But in the light bulb, the photons of light are actually chaotic in just an ordinary bulb. There's no order or rhythm of the discharging photons. The light tends to be more dim, right? So the laser beam generates coherent light, which is why it can accomplish so many extraordinary things. The laser beam manages all of its own energy. The photon of light that it emits, those photons are pulsating at the same frequency of energy, all those little photons. This, I think, is a lot like our attention. You know, the quality of attention that we maintain is important because we can only change what we're paying attention to. Hmm? So when people say, oh, I don't want to know about that, I don't want to think about that, I don't want to give that any of my time or any of my attention. The downside of that is that we can only change what we pay attention to. It's like you're saying into the universal mind, no, 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 I don't like that, but I'm willing to let it continue to operate because I don't want to give it any of my mental or spiritual attention. So, you know, control and choice, I think, um, that, that sort of falls upon our awareness. And awareness falls upon where and how we choose to direct our attention. So I think we want to learn to manage and focus our mental energy more efficiently in order to improve the quality of our life experience, right? So we learn to listen, we learn to pay attention, and the more you listen, the more you're going to hear, the more you hear, the more deeply you'll understand, the more masterfully you'll live your life. So sounds good to me. I think it's important for us to build our ability to concentrate, to gain some level of mastery over our own attention. You know, what could I accomplish if I could maintain a more focused mental state? That's an interesting thing. What could I accomplish? Because I think I'm doing all right. I think I'm doing OK. But if I could really maintain this more focused mental state, what might my life be like? What might I be able to achieve, to accomplish? How might I be? You know, because I think we all get distracted. You know, other concerns just pop up. I mean, I'm right there in the, you know, in the first line of defense. I have shiny object syndrome as much as anybody. <laughs> You know, I'll just be going along, and then all of a sudden, like, oh, squirrel, squirrel. It's like my dogs, you know? We go for a walk, you know, and they're just chugging along, and we're doing great, but then there's a squirrel, and it's like they completely forgot about the fact that we're walking, you know, because they're so caught up in the squirrel. And I think that's me a lot of times. 
you know, a little bushy tail goes running by, and I'm, I'm completely off onto something else. So correct concentration, it seems to me, is somewhere between putting effort into it, but it also being effortless. There's this place kind of in the middle there, a place between determination and allowing, you know, directing the flow of my mental energy and resting in the flow. There's a place kind of in the middle. So I believe that the ideal state is concentration with relaxation. It's like, can I do both of those at the same thing? Absolutely. That's the optimal state for creative thinking. You know, that if we concentrate too hard, I think what happens is we tire ourselves out. Right? And then we just move on to other things. Oh, that was harder than I thought. I can't do it. Never mind. I'm not going to bother. So maybe it's more like holding something delicate, like a, little, like a little baby bird. Imagine if you were holding like a little baby bird or even a butterfly. Have you ever had a butterfly land on you? Isn't that the most extraordinary thing? That has to be some kind of communication, don't you think? Other than you look like a tree. You know, I mean, I always feel like the universe is telling me something when like something like that happens, right? So, so maybe it's like holding on to something that's really delicate. It could only be a good thing to be more focused and yet flexible and, and more in control of our own creative intelligence, right? So I think that this, this balanced state, that, that this is a balanced state, and where you can focus your attention whenever, wherever we choose. Because I think the quality of our attention is fundamental to the quality of our life. If our attention is ping-ponging all over the place, that's going to be reflected in how our life is. You know, but if we're really focused, if we have that discipline to keep going in the direction of our goal, of our dream, or, or of anything on our list that we're out to accomplish, the quality of our attention is fundamental to the quality of our life. See, because I think the ability to focus our mind is a measure of how in control or out of control we are in our life. I mean, if you look at it, where we cannot focus, those areas tend to be uh, a little more sketchy, a little more elusive to us, sort of harder for us to grasp and feel like we're involved in co-creating in those areas. I think we all have times where we're really, really focused. Now, probably every person here has had some experiences, I'm certain of it, where we were really, really focused. Maybe you felt, uh, and at that time, I think maybe you felt really alive and really in the flow during those times, a time where you were so captured by the sweet intensity of the moment that nothing else dared to intrude. You know those times? Those times you know you're doing something and without really thinking about it, just hours go by, and you think, God, where did the afternoon go? What happened there? So, oh, that must have been the zone. I think I was in it. You know, that must have been one of those times. See, because the times we relaxed into the flow, and we've all done it, I'm certain, there, we've all had times where we just sort of <sighs> relaxed down into the flow. We felt carried and simultaneously supported, moving effortlessly and easily through some experience in our life. I really like that. I think that's good. Personally, I'd like to have a lot more of being in the flow and feeling carried through experiences in my life. So there, there may have been, what, a sense of wonder in that experience or being joyful or gratitude or deep connectedness or aliveness, maybe clarity, a sense of I'm really being on purpose here. You know, it may be that these are the moments that are actually what, we're mo what I would say are most worth living for. Because they remind us what we're looking for and what we're capable of doing and being. And like I said, it's wonderful when we know what we're capable of doing and being, but then shiny object. We get distracted. I get caught up in something else. And oh yeah, this is really important. This is where I want my life to go. This is what I want to accomplish. This is a relationship I want to heal or a healing I want to have in my body or some money I want to put together to have in the bank, or whatever that is, but then something else distracts us. Something else catches our attention. So in a sense, when we feel that 
in the flowness, whatever that is, I think in that moment, in that instance, we've actually touched the hem of the garment. You know, this, you know, this is, I'm not talking about having a rigid kind of concentration, because Ernest Holmes says, no, that's, that's not it. We're not trying to make something happen through the power of our mind, you know. Money in my bank account. Money in my bank account. You know, that's not it. It's, um, because the more rigid something is, the more vulnerable it is to collapse. So probably like all of us this week, I've been watching um, on TV uh, what's going on, particularly in Florida. And, uh, and I saw a little thing the other day that was so interesting to me. It showed all these really tall skyscrapers of apartments and condo buildings. You know, there are lots of them in Miami now, and I think they said there are 20 cranes or more building more, and they're really up high, these cranes on the buildings. That was really interesting, it was really fascinating. And then it said that the higher up you go, the higher the winds are. And I thought, that's interesting. And so they said, people who live really high, <laughs> you get a better view of the activity, um, those buildings will have up to a whole foot of sway. Hmm? And just saying, I thought, like, heard that, and I like, I got to sit down. I got to sit, you know? So think, that's a lot of sway. You know, imagine your condo up there on the 55th floor going like, hee, hee. Uh, but if the building was really rigid, if they hadn't figured in the sway into the construction of the building, if the building was really rigid and had no sway, when the winds hit, the building would go over. Right? God, this is just, just like us. You know, if I'm really rigid when things come up, I only have one response. You know? And that's not a great way to be, in a, because the, what we learn in the world, if we're, if we're paying attention, is it's good to be able to have a whole variety of potential responses to things that we can choose from, that we can respond from, rather than a building snapping being the only reaction it could possibly have if it's really, really rigid. So I think you know, we have lots of tools uh, in our life. We have lots of technologies, lot, lots of gadgets to assist us in life. But the science of mind would say our mind is the most important thing, our most important tool to change and heal and evolve and grow our life. It all begins for us with our mind. And understanding and using the mind, you know, is what Ernest Holmes and all the New Thought founders referred to as mental science. And, and learning to work in mental science can lead us to a happier and a healthier life. Because really, to learn how to think is to learn how to live. You know, so, so you know, we say in Science of Mind, I don't want to tell anybody what to think. We want to teach you how to think. We want to show you that your thinking is creative and that there are consequences or results from the way we choose to think. So I think to master our attention, I think the first thing is that we have to say, all right, what do I want to focus on? Because remember, energy goes where energy flows. What you focus on increases. Have you ever noticed in a relationship that if you're focusing on what's wrong with somebody you are in a relationship with, that list just gets longer and longer and longer? That it's not hard to find all the things that they're doing that are really working your last nerve, huh? You know, friend, partner, whatever it is. You know? But by the same token, you can turn that principle the other direction. And if you start to focus on all the things that are right, with your partner, you will notice that those things continue to grow and expand and increase. Why? Because what you focus on increases. Right? And so what are we most aware of? This is what I would ask us to think about today. The, or at least the first thing is, what am I most aware of? You know? So we would all do this together. Everybody do a nice big inhale. And quickly. Think about peace in me, peace within yourself, a quality of God that is peace within you. Now exhale, and as you exhale, think about peace in the world. Inhale, peace in me. Exhale, peace in the world. Two more times. Inhale, peace in me. Exhale, peace to the whole world. One more. Inhale, peace in me. Exhale, peace to the whole world. Now. For the, that little cycle of four in-breaths and four out-breaths, we were probably not thinking about anything else. Probably. Isn't that wonderful? See, so you can meditate. You can do this. You can focus your attention. Right? Whatever you choose. I think perhaps the next piece that's important is 
after we have some ability to focus our attention, to have continuous sustained attention, you know, where, where we're also tethering our mind to something. You know, we have about 21,600 breaths a day. Isn't that interesting? That we breathe about 21,600 times every day. So if we're distracted, what do we do? We say, well, breathing in, silently to myself, I say, I'm breathing in. And I exhale, and silently to myself, I say, breathing out. And what I find is that I become very present in the process. Because in that moment, I'm just thinking about, I'm breathing in. And in the next moment, all I'm thinking about is, I'm breathing out. You know? So why is this important? Because I'm not doing a little day trip to my past, and I'm not spinning out about some imaginary future. I get to actually be right here, present right now in this moment of my life. And I think that's a really, really good thing. Also, I think that there's something about developing a greater flexibility of attention because we can move in an infinite variety of ways. Because the more rigid your mind is, the more rigid your brain function is, right? But the more flexible your mind is, the mind can handle more complex situations. So a more flexible mind can deal with more challenging things without any kind of distress. That would be a really good thing, wouldn't it? You know, to say, well, challenging things can come up, but I don't get all worked up about it because I know my mind can deal with whatever shows up. See, I think our ability to be mindful of where our attention is, you know, of where our attention is focused and how our attention is directed is key, is really the key to really optimal use of this creative intelligence that's within us. You know, St. Paul said, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And it has been my experience that people are not really interested in renewing their mind. They're more interested in rehashing their mind. Um, what I mean by that is they just want to think the old stuff harder, you know, rather than thinking something new or something different or something of a higher order. Why don't they want to think something new, different, or of a higher order? Because it's work. Right? It takes some effort to do that. Hmm? But if our mind is undisciplined, it seems to me that when my mind has been most undisciplined, I've wasted a lot of time and a lot of energy. Maybe I'm the only one. I don't know. Squirrel. There it goes, right? <laughs> you know, my mind goes here, my mind goes there, my mind goes here, you know. But as far as the short term, Disciplining and focusing our mind helps us stay more present in the moment with whatever we're doing. And that's usually a really good thing. Why so many things take so long to accomplish is because we're doing 97 other things. There have been studies recently that say multitasking is really actually not effective. I'm really sorry for all of you who consider yourself great multitaskers, but it, the studies are in and it's not really that effective. You're just messing with yourself. Uh, <laughs> The long-term benefit of this is the clarity and the consistency of purpose, you know, a dedicated commitment to something in your life. That we can really, really stay focused and focused on something and actually make progress in the pursuit. We actually get closer until we're there. So I think, you know, this idea of living on purpose and staying true to your commitment keeps your energy and intention focused in such a way that it will actually produce results. So I think to cultivate concentration, you know, in a sense, that's a gradual process. But we come to it again and again and again. I don't think anybody here is going to take hours a day to put into something like this. But I think it's something that's really worthwhile for us to, a couple of times a day, give our attention to. You know? To, all right, I breathe in, peace in me. I breathe out, peace into my world. I breathe in, peace in me. I breathe out peace into my world. See, because the quality of our life depends upon the quality of our attention. So if my attention is going to peace in me, peace in the world, that's going to add something really valuable to the quality of my life experience. Rather than every time I turn on the TV or the radio or look at a newspaper and my mind just starts to spin with everything, you know? I've noticed that if I do that, 
if I just go what I call, if I just go external, at the end of that, I have a level of stomach acid that is like a volcano, you know? And I think, oh my God, why do I feel this way? Why do I feel this way? Well, because I wasn't in charge of my mental and spiritual household there, you know? Whereas if I watch that, and I'm not saying we shouldn't watch, because, you know, it's good to know what's going on to some extent in the world, but I want to watch with consciousness. And what I mean by that is I want to watch, or I want to read, or I want to listen, and while I'm doing that, peace in me, peace into my world. Peace in me, peace into my world. Now, the information that's coming to me has not changed at all. I'm still able to receive the information. I know what's going on in the world. That's, to me, that's important. But now what I've done, though, is that I've sort of ratcheted up my consciousness a level. And now, rather than being at the effect of that information that's coming me to the world, I'm actually being in a co-creative relationship with it. Oh, there's that information in the world. Peace in me, peace to my world. Peace in me, peace to my world. So what you focus on increases. I'm inviting us this week to really look at and watch what we focus on. It's obvious, isn't it, that we could focus on some things and it will really add to our life in a wonderful, positive, healthy way. We could focus on some other things and it's only going to detract from our life. Now, we're in church. Tell the truth. Why would you do that? You know, no good's going to come from that. And remember also that energy goes where energy flows. What are you going to put your energy into this week? Let's pray. So we turn our attention inward right now, remembering that right here where we are, the fullness, the allness of God, God's infinite loving spirit is right here. It surrounds us. It fills us. It lifts us up. It is the most true, most real thing about us. And so in this awareness, I speak the word for each and every one of us, that we are keenly aware of what we're putting our attention on, knowing that that is what's growing and expanding and increasing in our life. I know for each and every one of us that it is truly God's desire that our life be good in every way. And so I know for us that we are open and willing and receptive to the goodness of God, not only for ourselves, but for all people everywhere. So we think of all the things in the news that have pulled at our attention this week, and we remind ourselves that God is fully present right there, that there is a principle and a power and a spiritual activity that's everywhere equally present. So it is not possible that God can be absent from these things that are taking place in the world around us. So we include in our prayer today our family members and our friends and loved ones. We know that right where they are, the fullness and the allness of God's infinite spirit is right there. We bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere. We bless synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God. And I'm certain that we are blessed by being together that today there is raising up, that everyone is open and receptive and willing for their right and perfect healing. And so with a full heart, I give thanks that this is so. I release my word. And so it is. Together we all say, Amen.